Before looking at how molecules behave, we need to understand the way that atoms attract other atoms. Covalent bonding is a result of the sharing of valence electrons between atoms, and usually occurs between two non-metals. The reason for this is that the electronegativity difference between most nonmetals is not great enough to cause the electrons to transfer from one atom to the other. When the electron negativities of the two atoms is the same, we say that the molecule has pure covalent bonds. This also results in the molecule itself being nonpolar as the electron distribution is even. In other words, they share evenly. When the electron negativity difference is big enough to cause an uneven distribution of electrons, but not great enough to transfer electrons, we end up with Polar covalent bonds, these polar covalent bonds usually cause an overall uneven electron distribution in the molecule, and the molecule becomes a polar molecule with one side slightly positive and the other side slightly negative. It is possible that these polar covalent bonds can still result in non-polar molecules if the symmetry of the molecules allows for the uneven electron distribution to cancel out. So it's like a tug of war for the electrons, but both sides pull equally. Symmetrical molecular shapes such as tetrahedral, trigonal planar and linear are usually nonpolar molecules, while non-symmetrical molecular shapes, such as angular and pyramidal, result in polar molecules. When battling to decide whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, you can simply draw the Lewis dot diagram for the molecule. Then have a look at the central atom. If it has a lone pair of electrons, or a non-bonding pair of electrons, the molecule will be polar. It is this lone pair of electrons that distort the molecular shape by pushing the bonding pairs to one side as they fight to take up space around the central atom. If there is no lone pair around the central atom, the bonding pairs distribute themselves evenly, allowing the uneven electron distribution to cancel out. Intermolecular forces are the forces that hold molecules together and are largely responsible for physical properties of substances. These include melting and boiling points, viscosity, surface tension, vapor pressure, and capillary action. Ultimately, intermolecular forces are governed by the principles of electrostatics. The stronger the charges and the smaller the distance between the charges, the stronger the electrostatic force holding the molecules together. The more polar the molecule, the greater the charge and resulting electrostatic force. You can imagine that a nonpolar molecule has an extremely weak positive and negative side resulting in a very weak force of attraction forming between the molecules. It is easily broken with very little added energy. These weak forces are called London forces, also known as dispersion forces or induced dipole forces. 
Non-polar substances with these types of bonds between the molecules have very low melting and boiling points and are usually gases at room temperature. Good examples are O2 oxygen, N2 nitrogen, and CO2 carbon dioxide in air. If the polarity of molecules increases, the force between the molecules increases as well. These intermolecular forces are known as dipole-dipole forces, and they occur between the molecules of polar substances. These forces require a little more energy to break, and so these substances have slightly higher melting and boiling points than the non-polar molecules. Molecules also break free from the surface of liquids more difficultly, so these substances have low vapour pressures. Chloroform, or CHCl3, is a good example of a polar liquid substance. Water is polar and has dipole-dipole forces of attraction, but that's not the reason it's a liquid. There's a special case of dipole-dipole bond where the polarity of the molecules is so great that it's placed in a category of its own. These are called hydrogen bonds, and they occur when molecules have a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom. These three atoms have an electronegativity so high that the uneven electron distribution leads to very strong poles. Substances containing hydrogen bonds have very high melting and boiling points as they require lots of energy to break the bonds. These are not chemical bonds and don't change the chemical formula of a compound. So, to summarize hydrogen bonds, when hydrogen is covalently bonded to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine in a molecule, the molecule will usually be capable of forming hydrogen bonds between molecules.